All right, imagine, if you will, you have a time machine and you plan to travel back to the year 2011, but you're only gonna be bringing back five Hero Factory sets to the present day. No more, no less. So which five are you gonna be picking? Well, in this video, I'll discuss my top five favorite sets from this year that I would be taking back with me in my time machine and also highlight five honorable mentions as well. Let's start things off. So to give you a brief reminder, in 2011, we saw the birth of CCBS, the character and creature building system. It's a system that uses bones and armor shells and all sorts of other pieces to create wonderful construction figures. It was a pretty big departure from Hero Factory 1.0 and Bionicle before it as well. So Hero Factory 2.0 saw the birth of the fire villains in the ordeal of fire. And then later that year, we got Hero Factory 3.0 with the savage planet era of Hero Factory. Honestly, I thought these were from separate years. So it was a surprise when I realized this, but uh, no, they were the same year. There's a lot to pick from this year. So with that out of the way, let's start off with that number five spot. And it begins with Stringer 3.0. Okay, look, the 3.0 heroes had some of the coolest aesthetics. Epic animal-themed masks. A lot of them also had some awesome claw weapons. That was so cool. There was so much to love with that. But Stringer, oh baby, Stringer was the best. That incredible mask that was designed to look like a bear. Dang, it looks really good. And honestly, a lot of masks from that wave were really, really special. But there's just something about this mask. It's mean and menacing, but it's also heroic and stoic. And then you combine that with the stylish black and keto orange color scheme of Jimmy Stringer. Oh man, he just oozes cool. Oh, and then you get a big old bear claw weapon, which alone looks really cool, but it kind of has some like Wolverine vibes going on, which makes it even cooler. Everything about this toy is just so freaking cool. In my opinion, this was the best 3.0 hero and maybe one of the coolest hero designs from the entirety of every hero we ever got. Although I don't know, wait till we get to the breakout episode. There were some pretty good ones there, but still Jimmy Stringer, top tier. I remember having this toy on my desk for ages, longer than most Hero Factory toys actually. I tended to either take them apart or put them on a shelf or whatever, but I always had Stringer right by my laptop so I would pose him and play with him all the time. So many good memories with him. Really, really lovely set. So from one brilliant hero to another one, we'll move to the number four spot. This one goes to two heroes, actually. This is a combo set. It's set number 66414, Super Pack 2-in-1. So really, this is just like a fancy box that contains both Stormer and Rocker 3.0. And then, of course, you can also build their combo model. The set does include instructions for you to do so. And I love that idea. It just encourages creativity, doesn't it? You know, as Lego should. Isn't it lovely that you get both sets so you can build them up, play with them, and then when you're done, take them apart, put them together, build that combo model, and you get extra fun, extra time to build, extra time to play. It's just a win-win situation. Now, I never actually had this combo set, but I did, of course, have Rocker and Stormer as a kid. I actually never built the combo model either, so I kind of want this set now so that I could experience that. Although, I wouldn't need to buy this set, I could just go and get my Rocker and Stormer that I bought separately and build that combo model, but, you know, this is in a nicer package. That being said, I probably wouldn't want to open this package because it is very rare and very expensive. So rare that there are no listings for this on Bricklink whatsoever, so who knows what this is even worth. But this isn't actually the only combo pack that came out this year. There were plenty more. Each one of these is super cool, but I'm picking the Rocker and the Stormer one as my favorite. Although honestly, a lot of them look great. And man, all of these different combo models, they just excite me. I love rare, weird Lego like this. And this one is especially rare because uh, from what I read on Wikipedia and a few other different places, it was saying that these sets were exclusive and only released in South Korea. And they were a limited release in South Korea as well. So, you know, hopefully my time machine allows me to travel over there because uh, I definitely would really want these if I went back in time. Such a beautiful piece of weird Lego history. All of them are so, so cool. All right, now to number three, and this is a beauty. It's a bigger one as well. It's Fire Lord. Now look, you can't really go wrong with the main villain of a wave of Hero Factory. They were always pretty awesome. And look, Fire Lord and his big old arm mounted shield with these weapons on the front. It's a good multi-purpose weapon. He's also got his classic Xamosphere launcher, a nice menacing mask design with some cool horns, and then those jetpack engines on the back, which could either be a jetpack or just some sort of like exhaust port thing with fire spewing out, whatever it is. Either way, you can't go wrong with this set. It has a rad aesthetic and Fire Lord is just awesome. Although the name Fire Lord is a little on the nose, but eh, it's still cool. 
Plus, this was basically the first time that they used CCBS to build a Titan. It was exciting to see this like double layered CCBS bone design on the legs to give them that like strong muscular look. The same can be said for this torso as well, using some additional like technic elements and things in there to make it a little bit more interesting. Such a great set for the time. Now, when this did come out, I bought one of them and I loved him, I built him, he was great. But then I saved up my money and I bought five Fire Lords in total. Now why did I need to buy five of this set? Well, he is an insanely good parts pack. And he still is today, to be honest. But at the time when I bought all these Fire Lords, I was working on a huge mock. And Fire Lord just had all the right pieces that I needed to keep building this mock. So what was that mock? Well, his name was Magma Gear. And yes, it was a terrible mock. Looking at it now, it is a hot, hot mess. It's cluttered and it looks like it was made back in 2011 because it was made back then. I was still learning how to build at the time. But the story behind this mock is still cool. So this was inspired by a build built by my very good friend Shadow Gear 6335 otherwise known as Brendan. And this is his mock here, it is titled Shadow Gear. So he painted that Skrull shield that's used for his hat on the top there. He obviously painted it silver, the original piece is red. And I thought that was such an awesome aesthetic and I thought, well, what if I built the same kind of idea as the character, but instead of Shadow Gear, I called him Magma Gear, then that way I wouldn't have to paint my Skrull shield, I could keep it exactly as it comes in the set, and I get a sort of slightly different, but a character that's still within the vein of Shadow Gear. And then I showed it to Brendan, he loved it, yeah, it was, it was a fun time. I went on to revamp Magma Gear like a year later, and then Callan Lord of Fire also put Magma Gear in some of his own videos, so yeah, the character kind of grew into something a lot more fun and exciting. It might be interesting to revisit this character now that I've certainly grown as a builder, but still, you know, there was a lot of fun memories associated with this character, and some that you might even recognize if you've watched Callan's videos. And plus two, you know, like I've had the pleasure of hanging out with Brendan and his partner Molly multiple different times, so yeah, Fire Lord has that nice connection with a lot of fun memories of the past, so lots to love about the actual set, but lots to love about uh, kind of what that set stood for as well. So if you enjoyed some of those memories from the past, well, there's a few more in store for the number two spot. This one goes to the awesome, the incredible Evo 2.0. So the 2.0 era was the first time that we saw the character of Evo, and he went on to get a lot more cool versions later on, so this was the birth of something awesome. But in his 2.0 form, I don't know, he just immediately grabbed me. Evo very quickly became my favourite Hero Factory hero, although Surge is still my ultimate favourite of all the heroes. Although eh, 2.0 Surge, he was just kind of meh, he didn't have that Surge mask anymore, so you know, it didn't really grab me, for obvious reasons. And then Surge just straight up wasn't in 3.0, which was a tr Travesty. But look, Evo was still awesome. Now, Evo's weapon was the coolest of all the 3.0 heroes. It was a very interesting blaster design, but it also had these fantastic spears pointing out of it. And what was great about these spears is that they were very unique because they were flexible. They weren't like the regular spears that you see in like castle sets, which were like solid ABS plastic. No, these ones, if you shoved it up against a wall, it would just like blah up against it. Uh, and that's really cool. That had a lot of mocking potential and it's just a really exciting, strange piece. Also, purple and yellow for the color scheme? Oh, brilliant. Eva was just the best. Now, when this came out in stores, I remember being so hyped to buy it. I waited months for this set. I was so, so keen. In fact, I was so excited this was the very first set I bought when these sets finally dropped on Australian store shelves. Now, that was partially because I just thought the set was cool and I liked him and I wanted him, but it was mainly because I wanted the pieces from Evo to build a very special mock. This was the self mock of Mitch Henry, a builder who you've definitely seen on this channel before. I feature his stuff quite a lot, and he's a good friend of mine as well. Our friendship started in the sort of you know, 2010, 2011, uh, early mock pages days of the LEGO community. And Mitch Henry's self mock at the time used a lot of pieces from Evo 2.0. This is his version of this self mock today, which is a lot more updated, but you know, it continues a few ideas from the earlier versions. And then now here is the version that I built back in the day. And this was a lot more similar to how his self mock looked back then. But yeah, I remember I built everything else that I could on this mock, the torso, the limbs, the legs, everything, but I just waited until that set came out. And I remember it took ages. That was back in the day when Australia tended to get things a lot later than America did. But after ages of waiting, I finally opened up that set after I bought it, took out the pieces that I needed to finish off my mock, and it was finally done and it was just so gratifying. So yeah, Evo was great, but a lot of the cool memories associated with what I built with his pieces, that's even better. Yeah, so before we get to that number one spot, 
We'll finish off with some honorable mentions. In no particular order, we're gonna start off with Nex 3.0. Now, I love Stringer, he's definitely my favorite of the 3.0 heroes, but Nex is a close second. I mean, he's also got a fantastic, cool looking wrist blade weapon thing. But look at that beautiful mask, the wonderful saber-toothed tiger aesthetic that's going on. Oh, it's breathtaking. It looks so good. And that could work for a hero. That could also work for a villain as well. Or any other kind of Bionicle mock too. Great pieces and a fantastic look. The next honorable mention goes to Stormer 3.0. Now, I just, it's more because I have a funny story with this character. So I was on a Skype call at the time when the sets were still on the shelves. Uh, it's a Skype call, yeah, you can tell how long ago this was. But I was Skyping Brendan, Shadow Gear 6335, who I mentioned before, uh, and he was telling me that he just bought Stormer 3.0 and he said he hated the mask design on Stormer. He just thought it looked super silly and lame and just kind of hated it. Now, you know, I heeded his warning, but very soon after I went to the shops and I was like, yeah, you know what, I'm going to buy this set. Maybe Brendan's wrong, maybe I'm going to look at this and I'm going to think it's awesome. Because just looking at it on the box, I was like, no, his mask looks cool, what are you talking about? So I bought it and I was like, I'm going to prove this man wrong. So, you know, later when I was building it, I was close. I was almost finished. I just really needed to put the head on. But the whole time I was building it, I was like, I'm not going to look at this mask. I want to take in Stormer, fully built in person in my hand and see that head with the body because that might make me like it more. And I was about to put the head on. Well, I was about to pick up the head, but then I needed to quickly get out because uh, my family and I were doing something. So I had to leave and I, th I said, you know what? I'm not even going to look at the mask. I'm going to leave it. And then when I return... I'm gonna put that mask on and it's gonna be it's gonna be really gratifying, right? And you know, when I was out doing stuff with my family, the whole time I was thinking about it and I was like, yeah, oh, I'm really excited to go home and uh, prove Brendan wrong and, and discover a really cool new headpiece on Stormer 3.0. So came back home and I was all ready to do it and all that hype and build up, it was so exciting. And I put it on and guess what? Brendan was right, it was awful. All that hype and I was let down. Now look, do I still think that mask is lame? Honestly, I don't know. I ended up just taking that set apart and putting it in with my other pieces, so I kind of haven't looked at it for ages. I'd love to rebuild Stormer and have another look at it and see if I still feel the same way, or maybe it's grown on me now that I'm a little bit older. I get the sense I would like it a lot more now, but hey, I thought that back in 2011 and I was wrong. But still, that's a fun memory and whenever I look at Stormer, I think of that. Plus, honestly, it's a nice reminder that even in a set that lets you down or you're a little disappointed with, you can still find some joy, you know, looking back on it and thinking of the fun times. All the funny stories. The next honorable mention now is Waspix. Not much to say here, but I just really like this design. It's a great use of CCBS parts and the cool, you know, four-armed villain. They kind of just nailed it. It's a great set, it's a great concept, just very well executed. Rocker XL is the next honorable mention. Now, I've never owned this set, and maybe one day I will in the future, I'd like to. But because I've never owned it, yeah, that's why it's not in my top five, because I just don't have enough information to know if it's cool or not. But I do love the idea of XL characters. We got a few more of them in later waves of Hero Factory, but Rocker XL started it all, so I can very much appreciate that awesome idea. I thought it was a really cool concept. Just taking one of the original heroes and then buffing them up and making them look super cool. Now, at the time when this set came out, I remember the reason I didn't get it was because I'd already bought Rocker 3.0, and I looked at this set and I went, well, I kind of already have Rocker. This is just a bigger version, and honestly, I think I like the smaller one a little bit more. But hey, hopefully I change my mind in the future. I very well might buy Rocker XL. There's a toy fair I go to a lot in Perth, and there's someone who's been selling a Rocker XL there. I might grab it next time I go, and then I'll do a review on it and let you know if my thoughts change. But still, he's a great set. He does definitely deserve a spot on the honorable mentions list. And finally, it is certainly worth mentioning the Hero Recon team. I just did a video talking about this in great detail, so go and check that out if you want to hear a lot more about this. But hey, the idea of going to lego.com, designing your own hero, and then Lego sends you that hero in a cool custom box? That's awesome. Okay, that's the honorable mentions out of the way. Time for the number one spot. Who's it gonna be? Well, it goes to not just my favorite Hero Factory set of 2011, but it goes to my favorite Hero Factory set ever. Because let's face it, which Doctor is the best Hero Factory set? I mean, look at that incredible skull mask. And also look at that imposing silhouette. Mate, which Doctor is the best of the best? This set really defined CCBS for me. When this set came out, I was like, oh, I get it now. That's how you can use these pieces. Because this set perfectly integrated Technic and CCBS parts into an incredibly compact and well-designed frame. I mean, look at some of these videos here of how it poses and how it moves and how it holds itself. It's phenomenal. 
such a well-designed set. Another great thing about this set is that it came with heaps of red ball joints, 39 of them to be precise. I bought a couple of these sets as well, just not just for those ball joints, but that was certainly a big factor. This set is also a phenomenal parts pack. So good pieces, good look, innovative design, and something that's just like pushing the limits of CCBS, what's not to love? Because something else that's important to remember, at this time a lot of Bionicle fans were still a little bit skeptical of Hero Factory, they were like, I miss Bionicle, screw this Hero Factory thing, and I still kind of felt the same. But when a set like this came out, I was like, oh, actually I might like this. So yeah, it's a set like this that really just cemented my love of Exo4, of Hero Factory. I always get those confused, I don't know why. Which Doctor cemented my love of Hero Factory? Is what I was meant to say. I mean, look, there were plenty of other awesome sets that came out after this set, but they just couldn't top Witch Doctor. I mean, heck, the breakout wave that followed, that's kind of the best wave of Hero Factory. But nah, man, Witch Doctor's the best. It's a real beauty. So that's it for my top five favorite sets of 2011 in the wave of Hero Factory. Here's a list of all of my favorites that I featured just now. Are yours the same as what I put here? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and what you'd pick up if you had a time machine and you went back to 2011. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Happy building. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.